You gotta get it. Come on. Come on. Every time. Up, up, up. Did he get it? Did he get it? Of course I did. Oh. <laughs> Let's see it again. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I love that. Ali Jama, 32 kilo dumbbell presses. Working on that vertical pressing. Big shoulders. So uh, basically, at the Paralympic Games, um, the weightlifting version at the Paralympic Games is the bench press. And that's, that's what I do. All the Paralympic sports have classification. That's how athletes are kind of split. In para powerlifting, it's body weight only. So I compete against all the impairments, but we're kind of, kind of in a body weight class. So my classes are between 54 and 59 kilo class. So um, yeah, we'll see where I qualify, if I qualify. <laughs> Actually, it's been quite positive, uh, if that's strange. Um, I was never going to qualify last year because um, of the shape I was in. And obviously, um, I think for me, it gave me another year and a half to um, try and really focus on getting training consistent because it hasn't been the last four years. And also to treat, really focus on my health and kind of try and get as healthy as I possibly can. Uh, obviously, I can't be 100%, but like just try and kind of hang in there. Uh, for another 16 months and kind of try bridge that gap um i don't know if i've bridged it or not or find out in seven weeks but um yeah I'm, I'm, i think for me i was kind of obviously it was bad for a lot of athletes that it got postponed uh but for me personally um I, I thought it was my second chance yeah so the kind of the compli other complication with me is is that i'm considered very vulnerable too so i can't just uh, rock up in a gym and uh, train uh, even i had even though i have elite ex exemption um so i think what happened was we converted my living room to a gym uh, to make sure that I was training consistently uh, and making sure that actually for the first time in four years, I got to control every single variable of my life to make sure that the Crohn's and training were kind of prioritized and there was no uh, distractions, which actually worked pretty well in terms of consistency. Um, and now I've been lucky that obviously with the elite exemption, um, I'm actually now only part-time in the gym and only and part-time at home just to protect me even further. But we also know that me being in that environment, I need to come, kind of perform to my best. So um, I go in very, very early when there's nobody in, and then I leave uh, to kind of reduce that crossover. So we've taken every single protocol possible to protect me. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with that. Yeah, so it's uh, full, so it's full PPE, and then uh, I'm wearing a mask all the way along. Um, yeah, it's um, you're not, you're not going to get a pretty more secure environment, I think, uh, than, than, than what we have. So I'll be, I'll be, I'm lucky and, you know, I'm, I'm grateful I'm in, in the gym compared to what other people. So, yeah, I'm just going to, I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, for the last three years, I've had to indirectly self-isolate for long periods because of the option that I took. I can get sick and catch anything quite easily because um, it compromises my immune system. So um, I've had to pretty much adapt from about three, four years ago. So I guess I've had the tools and kind of the tools and the know-how um, to actually be okay during lockdown. And actually, it's nothing really changed for me really. Uh, it's a little bit more intense than it was before, obviously. But um, for, for me, like what I needed to do this time was to actually go. Well, you knew that this process was going to be kind of to, it had to test your adaptability, and um, I knew that I had to be adaptable and flexible in my plan. And this is just another hurdle that I have to be adaptable to. So um, for me, it's. Nothing's changed. The goal's still the same.